are live. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. For those joining us for the first time, and I know we do have some new classes joining us, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And we're so thrilled you guys could join us for the first time or the 53rd time if you've been with us since the beginning. Uh, I'm going to give a chance to all our classes to say a bit of a hello, and then we'll dive in with our speaker. So first, we've got Miss Smith's grade three fours in Peterborough in Ontario. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Hold the note. Hold the scream. Awesome. <laughs> we've got Miss Wise's grade sixes in Guelph, Ontario. Hi, guys. Hi, we got a thumbs up. <laughs> Little audio difficulty, but a thumbs up is what we want. Perfect. <laughs> We've got Miss Doty's grade fives in Flemington in New Jersey. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Welcome in. Uh, we've got Miss Olson's grade fives in Rochester in Minnesota. Hi, guys. Hi. They're so loud, they broke the mic. I love it. Awesome, way to go. Uh, we've got Miss Brunkies, grade twos in Pulaski in Wisconsin, joining us for the first time ever. Welcome in, guys. Hey, there's so many of you. Oh, wow, it's like the whole school, I love it. Awesome, all right. We've got Miss uh, Whitcomb's grade fives in Anaheim, California. Let me pull them up too. Say Welcome. hi. Hey, guys. Hi, hi guys, say hello. Hey. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, of course, the reason you guys are all joining us is we are joined live in Marathon, Florida, in the Florida Keys by Teresa at the Turtle Hospital. So since 1986, they have been rescuing, rehabilitating, and re-releasing injured sea turtles. They are our longest lasting and most prevalent partner. We love showcasing the amazing animals and the amazing work that gets done at the Turtle Hospital. And so without further ado, thank you so, so much for joining us, Teresa, and take it away. <laughs> Hi. So yeah, we're down here in the Florida Keys. And the great thing about Florida and the Keys is that it stays pretty warm down here all year round. So times like now when the rest of the country, the rest of the world is starting to get a little bit colder, we're still warm. Currently it's 80 degrees, water temperature still in the 70s, which makes it perfect for these turtles. Sea turtles are reptiles, so they're cold-blooded. They get their body temperature based off of the water temperature, so they don't like it when it gets too cold. So they stay down here pretty much all year round. So this little guy, this is... Teresa, oh, you're just muted for a second there. There we go. You're back. I don't know what happened there. Neither. Okay. <laughs> who, who is this? Who are we seeing? <laughs> this is our newest little guy. Um, this is a little juvenile green sea turtle. And so the greens are one of the more common species that we get down here in the Keys. And even though they're called the green turtles, you might notice he's not actually green, but he is a herbivore. So in the wild, he eats lots of seagrass and algae. Here, he gets romaine, lettuce, and kale, and all sorts of green stuff, but they eat so much of that green stuff that all of their fat and their insides turn green, hence the name. But his name is Grunt. It's typically the people that find our turtles, they get to name them. So as we go along, you'll notice that some of our turtles do have some very interesting names, but Grunt's came in because he was found floating. And so floating in a sea turtle is not normal. And then a perfectly healthy turtle, the only time they're ever up at the surface is to breathe. But as soon as they see you coming in their boat, they're gonna dive down and disappear. They swim a lot faster than we do. But Grunts looks perfect on the outside, but it turns out he has an intestinal parasite. So he's been eating but the parasites have been getting all of the food and not him. So he's just very weak, very lethargic. So he's on some anti-parasitic meds and some antibiotics and some vitamins just to boost him up, but he's doing okay. So he's just kind of hanging out in a little bit of water, enough that he can swim if he wants to, but if all he wants to do is sleep, that's okay too. That's all he has to do. And so when he does need to breathe, all he has to do is lift his head up to breathe. It's not that far away. Sort of our version of bed rest. Because they're just like us. When we get sick, we get very weak and tired. We just want to sleep all day. Same thing for these turtles. 
But there he comes up for a little bit of a breath. <laughs> but he's just not very active. But that's because he's sick. And that's one of the ways that we can tell that he's sick is by how active they're being, how well they're eating, kind of all of those different things. Because once they do start feeling better, they do start getting more and more active, which we'll check back in with Jack to see if he's going to wake up. They're all taking naps at the moment, but that's okay. Because this guy, this is Trinity, another green sea turtle. She's about 30 pounds. Now, she came in a few weeks ago. She had been attacked by a shark. And so that's actually how she got her name, Trinity, because she only has three flippers. Because that shark got that kind of left rear section of her shell, and it also got that left rear flipper. But she still has the other three flippers. She'll be able to be released. She'll always look a little bit different. But think of a three-legged dog. They may look different, but they can still do everything normal. They just have to learn how to adapt. Same thing with these turtles. And so she'll be here for a few months, give her a chance to heal and get nice and strong and adapt. And then she'll get to go home. But she was kind of cool. She was actually found by the Coast Guard because the Coast Guard station is right there on the water. Makes it a lot easier for them to launch their boats. So they were out there keeping an eye out. And they see this turtle kind of just drifting very slowly down the way. And they're like, hey, that turtle did not look normal. So they went, got in the boat, picked her up and realized, yep, she needs help. So they called us. And it's typically boaters and fishermen and people that are out there on the water that call us. And so makes it a little bit fun because as a thank you, then they get to name it. But we have an ambulance and we'll go pick that turtle up. So these turtles like to keep us on our toes because we never know when we're going to get a turtle. Like this guy, this is Jack-o-lantern. Jack-o-lantern came in on Halloween. Told you, sometimes the names are fun. But Jack-o-lantern came in entangled in some trap line. It was entangled around his left front flipper. So not severe enough that we had to worry about surgery or amputation, but kind of wrapped around enough that it made that flipper swollen. So didn't cut off the circulation completely, but it did kind of tighten it up a little bit. But it's been almost a month and a half. He's doing much better. We've been doing physical therapy and deep tissue massage and laser therapy, trying to get all of that blood circulating, get that flipper moving again. And he is doing much better. So hopefully just a few more weeks and then jack o lantern will get to be released. But for right now, just taking a nap. He likes to sit right there where the water comes in because it feels good. It's like the jet of a hot tub because they can feel things on their shell. Think about rubbing your fingernail. Now you can feel that. Well, that's what they feel. So get a little head massage at the moment. But with Jack-o-lantern, he is a loggerhead. And because we can't see his head at the moment, I'll show you Drifter, who is another loggerhead. Loggerheads get their name because they have that very, very large head. And so Drifter, kind of just about the same size as Jack-o-lantern. They're both about 150 pounds. So both very large heads. But they use that head because these guys are carnivores. So in the wild, they eat crab, lobster, conch, anything with that hard shell. And so they need that hard beak to be able to bite through all of that stuff. But Drifter, he came in, he was found floating. He got the name Drifter because he was actually kind of drifting along with the current. And so a couple out there fishing saw him floating. Now for Drifter, they could not get him on their boat by themselves. So we did have to call Fish and Wildlife to go help. He's not exactly a little turtle, but he's here now. Turns out he had, well, still has pneumonia because they have lungs. They breathe air just like we do. 
And so he's got pneumonia. And so he's had almost a month of antibiotics, trying to get that to clear up. And he's doing better. He's no longer floating. But it's probably going to take at least another month or two to get that fully healed, just because pneumonia is one of those things that takes a long time. Even in people, it takes a long time to heal. So until then, he just gets to hang out, gets to stay on the meds, so that way we can make sure that he stays nice and healthy. Because once we release these turtles, they're not ever coming back especially not for a checkup. So we have to make sure that when they do get released that they are completely healthy. Oh, jack-o'-lantern woke up. <laughs> when they are sleeping, so taking a little nap, they can hold their breath up to about five hours at a time. So there's never any guarantee that they're gonna wake up when we want them to. Sea turtles are very stubborn. It's hard to make a 150 pound turtle do something that they don't want to do. But when they are sleeping like that, they can hold their breath up to about five hours. But when they're being active and swimming around, they can hold their breath anywhere from a few minutes to an hour. It all depends on how active they're being. It's just like with people. If you held your breath and sat in a chair, you could probably hold your breath for maybe a minute or two. But if you try to hold your breath and do jumping jacks, you'd be a lot less. It's the same concept with these turtles. The more active they are, the less they're able to hold their breath for. But if they're just sleeping, so sitting on the bottom, not expending any energy, it can be a few hours. And of course, he's gonna be slow and coming up to take a breath because I want him to. There he goes. <laughs> But he's that loggerhead, just like Drifter. He's got that big head. And then, of course, one of the perks of being us, living on an island, is that we are surrounded by ocean. And so it's how we get most of our turtles from the boaters and the fishermen. And if the boaters are actually close enough, they can come right here into our docks. And today we've got a few pelican friends. There's typically iguanas out here, but no iguanas at the moment. They must all be hiding, taking a little afternoon nap. But one of the kind of interesting things is that we have this big giant pool for the turtles that were either trying to get ready to be released or the ones that cannot be released. Because when they're sick, of course, they have to stay by themselves because they're just like us. When we get sick, we have to stay home from work and stay home from school so that we get everybody else sick. Well, those tanks are the sea turtle version. But once they're healthy, then they can go with other turtles. But we try to get them released as much as we can, but sometimes that's not always possible. So sometimes they do have to stay here. And so like this guy, this is Smalls. He's one of our non-releasable turtles. And he's non-releasable because he has what we call bubble butt syndrome, which is what happens when they get hit by a boat and the force of that boat strike either causes air to get trapped or it causes nerve damage. But end result is that now Smalls floats. He's unable to dive and sit on his own at the bottom, which floating for sea turtles is not normal. So can't really fix it, so they have to stay here. And it's called bubble butt syndrome after the original bubble butt. So this is the original. He is our longest resident. He's been here since 1989. So he's kind of the one that started it all. And so he's been our longest resident, but to kind of help them out while they're here, because here, floating's not as bad as it is in the wild, because we're not gonna let them starve, we'll feed them up at the top, but it's not always very comfortable. So to make them more comfortable, we attach lead weight to the outside of their shells. So that gray oval on bubble butts, but that's a weight. So when he wants to, he can go down to the bottom and go to sleep. And then eventually that weight is going to fall off. So then they're back to floating, so even with the weights, they still cannot be released. 
because, again, once you release them, they're not coming back. But even though Bubble Butt's been here the longest, he's not our oldest. Our oldest is our biggest. That's this big girl here. This is Bowie. She's about 280 pounds. She is a beast. But she also has Bubble Butt. So she's float. She's a non-releasable. But Bowie at 280 pounds is probably close to about 40 years old. Because sea turtles never stop growing, that means that the older the turtle, the larger they are. And so like a smaller turtle, not by much, but Kent's about 180 pounds. So probably about 20 to 25. You've got, let's see, that's Sam. Sam's only about 45 pounds. So probably only about 10, maybe 12 years old. But they all do fine. And even though sea turtles in the wild are solitary, so they do not travel in groups. So the movie Finding Nemo lied. They don't meet their parents. They don't go traveling the currents together. So if you're ever out on the ocean and you happen to see a sea turtle, you're just gonna see one here, one there. You won't find them in groups. So that means that when they first come in and we need to keep them by themselves, they're okay with that. And then once they get healthy and we need to put them together, they're okay with that too. They aren't really mean, but they're not really nice either. They just ignore each other. So they will sometimes steal food from each other or knock into each other. They just don't care. There's no concept of social etiquette or personal space, which sometimes just makes it kind of fun watching them. Some days it's like they're playing turtle bumper cars, but they do pretty good. And then these guys, these are green sea turtles as well. We've got more greens here than anything else. Currently, we do have 48 turtles. So they like to keep us on our toes. Typically, every year we get in about 100 turtles. So right now, it's about average for the time of year. OK, let's do some questions. Perfect. Let's dive in. Thanks so much, Teresa. That was fantastic. Um, so in addition to our live classes, uh, we've also got five more groups watching on YouTube. So if you guys want to type in some questions, let me know where you're coming from. I'd love to share as many as I can from there, too. Uh, but yeah, let's dive in. So Miss Smith's class, let's kick it off with you guys. Uh, if you have a question, uh, come on up. Oops, sorry. Go, Phoebe. All right, we're on it. <laughs> Why are some turtles green? You mean like the color or the species? The color. Um, yeah, the color. The color. Yeah. <laughs> well, here, most of the turtles are like their normal color, which is that brownish color. But in the wild, they'll typically have algae growing on their shell. So that gives them that kind of greenish tint. And especially here, when they first come in, they'll sometimes have a lot of algae on their shell. But here, we have to scrub them, give them a little bath, which some of the turtles like some of them not so much but it does kind of change their colors a little bit very cool all right um we've got a few teachers that i think had some mic difficulty so i'm going to go to one in a minute and if that continues then there's a way to get around that but we'll try and see if we can take a live question uh from miss wise's class if you guys want to come up and see how it goes um what is the worst injury you've ever seen on a turtle yeah well, because we are a hospital, sometimes we'll get turtles in that there's nothing we can do to help because we do have some turtles that do die. But we always try because these turtles will sometimes surprise you. They are pretty hardy animals after all. Um, so sometimes we'll get like really bad boat strikes or shark attacks, things like that. But a lot of the times it's when they have multiple injuries. So right up against the fence, he's being kind of shy at the moment. Uh, that big guy, that is Montel. Now he's had everything. So he's been bit by a shark, hit by a boat, entangled in fishing line, and he's had tumors. So Montel is missing half of his right front flipper, all of his left front flipper, his right eye, and his shell is dented on his left side. And so in order to be released, turtle needs three full functioning flippers. That's why like a turtle like Trinity will be okay because she still has three. But Montel only has two and a half 
flippers and one eye. So not very fast, but that's okay. In here, he doesn't have to be fast. He doesn't have to worry about boats or sharks or even finding his own food. He can just kind of do his own thing. Awesome. Very cool. I love when Montel gets brought up. It's every session, but it's always, it's quite the story. <laughs> he's uh, a cool turtle. He's a cool turtle. He's the best. Um, uh, all right, Miss Doty Slaz, if you guys want to come up, go for it. My question is about how many turtles do you release each year? Yeah. Well, that kind of depends on what turtles we have come in. Typically, we are able to release about 70%. But of course, how long they need to stay depends on the turtle and what's wrong with them. So sometimes they're here for about a month or two. Sometimes it's six months. Sometimes it's a year. So varies on the turtles. So like these guys, these are ones that we're trying to get ready to be released. So hopefully within the next month or so, they'll get to go home. But these guys came in with tumors which is something that these green sea turtles get. It's a virus called, caused by water pollution. It's called fibropapilloma, but it causes tumors to grow on their soft tissues. So their neck, their flippers, their eyes. So let's see. So like this is a picture of daredevil. Those things on top of his eyes, those are tumors. So like when daredevil came in, he couldn't see, he could barely move, he couldn't do anything. But now he's one of these guys. I think he's the one down there on the bottom kind of sleeping. But now he's ready to be released. Right. Just about. Amazing. Very cool. All right. Um, I wanted to pass along a question from Miss Martin's class. They're in Kannapolis, North Carolina on YouTube. Uh, and they had a joint question. One was the heaviest turtle, which you covered as, as buoy already, over 280 pounds. Um, but what's the youngest turtle at the turtle? <laughs> the youngest guy that we have, we do have a little post-hatchling because it's no longer nesting season. Nesting season is May through October. And so that's when they'll come up onto the beaches and lay their eggs. And then it typically takes about 50 to 60 days for those eggs to hatch. And then they're supposed to crawl to the ocean and swim offshore. We get the babies when like that doesn't happen. So currently we just have two. So we've got a little one, and little number two, these are little baby loggerheads. So when they grow up, they'll look like a uh, jack-o'-lantern and drifter. But at the moment, they're only about five and a half months old. So kind of it's a little bit bigger than my, smaller than my hand. <laughs> but they're what we call our Head Start program. So they're going to stay with us for about two years give them a chance to get a lot bigger, a lot healthier, a lot stronger. So that way, by the time that they do get released, they'll have a much better chance of survival. But everybody else we've already released. And these two, these two don't have names yet. Um, we typically wait till they're about six months old and then we'll come up with names. And then what we typically do is do like a Facebook poll, trying to figure out which two will, names we'll actually go with. Cool. Last two that we just did, they were named Neptune and Poseidon. So, kind of fitting for ocean animals. Sure is. Awesome. All right. Uh, Miss Olson's class, if you guys want to come up with a question. Yeah. How, how long is the life expectancy? Yeah. Lifespan's about 70 to 100 years. Yeah. So, so they're one of the, a lot of these turtles will outlive us. Yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. We, we so seldom cover animals that live as long as people do. Elephants is another example, but turtles are one of the longest lived creatures in the entire world. So very cool. That was a question asked a couple of times on YouTube too. So we've, we've covered that as well. Um, all right, let's uh, go to Miss Brunke's class. Come on up guys. How does a plastic, I mean, how does plastic hurt sea turtles? Ah, good question. In a couple of different ways. So you'll get turtles, like you met Jack-o'-lantern. Jack-o'-lantern was entangled. And so in his case, it was trap line. But we also see turtles entangled in fishing line. And pretty much anything out there that they can get entangled in, they will. They don't have fingers and thumbs. They can't untangle themselves. 
But sea turtles will also eat everything. I'm sure most of you guys know dogs that will eat literally any scrap of food that will fall to the floor or anything that gets left out. These turtles are kind of like that. They'll eat anything, whether it looks like food or not. And unfortunately, a lot of the times with plastics, especially things like plastic bags and balloon, that actually does look like food. Because if you have a plastic bag floating in the ocean, it's going to look like a jellyfish. And these turtles eat jellyfish. And then it, they eat it, and then they get sick. And with sea turtles, they don't know that they have to come into the doctor. We kind of have to find them. And if we find them in time, great. But sometimes we don't. Um, Miss Brookie's class, you guys have a whole bunch of students. It looks like you brought in multiple classes. So if you guys have a second question, another student with a question, uh, come on back up. And I love the, the squid hat thing at the back of the room. That's awesome. <laughs> Take your time. What kinds of tools do you use to help the turtles? Ah, did you catch that, Teresa? What sort of tools? Yeah, do you use well, <laughs> kind of a little bit of everything. Because the kind of easiest thing is, of course, like we've got tanks and we've got pipes and we've got pumps, pretty much everything to keep the turtles in a safe little area. But like in a lot of our tanks, we'll have toys so little little palm here he's got a little table some turtles will have other pvc pipe structures but these are toys because in the wild they're used to having rocks and ledges and reefs so things that they can hide under kind of hot sleep under or their shells up against plus as well as just nets and we have brushes and scrubbers and then all of the medical tools as well Think of if you ever go to the doctor or go to a vet's office, everything that they have, we have, because we have to take care of these turtles the same way. Cool. All right. Um, Miss Lumley and Miss House class, both in Ontario, wanted to ask on YouTube, uh, how many species of sea turtle are there and what are their names? <laughs> well, you guys have already seen the green sea turtle and the loggerhead sea turtle, because those are the two most common that we see down here in Florida. We do have one Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Uh, she's actually in the big pool there, but she's kind of shy. She does not always come up to say hi. Her name is Bender. But the Kemp's Ridleys are known as the ghost turtles because they're white. They kind of look like a ghost. The largest of the turtles, those are the leatherbacks. They'll get to be up to about 2,000 pounds which luckily we don't see those guys very often because I can't even imagine trying to take care of something that big. But those guys like to be offshore. They like being in deeper water. So we don't see them too often. And then the last species is the hawksbill, which get their name because they have a very sharp pointed beak. Looks like a bird beak. But the hawksbills are also known for that very pretty tortoise shell pattern on their shell. So it used to be that anything made out of tortoise shell like jewelry and glasses used to be made out of sea turtle shell. And so we don't have a full hawksbill, but we do have Maisie here. Maisie is a green hawksbill hybrid, which happens. It's not super common, but it's not super rare, but it does happen. And so her shell is kind of in between the two, but her big thing, of course, is her head, her beak, because greens eat plants. They have a very kind of short, kind of blunt beak, whereas the hawksbills have that very sharp, pointed beak. And if she wasn't taking a nap at the moment, you'd be able to see that. But we do have pictures of her up on our website. She is a very pretty turtle, but she came in with tumors. So she's kind of in between surgeries. So still needs one more surgery before she gets tumor free. Very cool. I, I always like using an analogy too with classes. If you try and think of a 2,000 pound turtle, for most of the classes, it's probably the weight of every single student in the room put together. So think of all of you together, that's one turtle. Very neat. Uh, all right, let's go to Miss Whitcomb's class in California, guys. Come on up. Hi, my name is Monica, and I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between a sea turtle and a pet turtle? 
Well, hopefully you're not going to have a sea turtle as a pet because sea turtles, they are protected under the Endangered Species Act. So if you did, you'd get in trouble and you'd go to jail. So don't suggest that. But yes, people do have freshwater turtles and tortoises and land turtles as pets. And the kind of easiest way to tell the difference between them all is look at their feet. Sea turtles are built to swim. Sea turtles spend their entire lives in the ocean. The only time they're ever on land is nesting or hatching. So sea turtles have flippers. That's what makes them very good swimmers. Whereas most freshwater turtles, like snapping turtles, the ones that live in ponds and rivers and lakes, they have to be able to come up out of the water to sunbathe. So they kind of have to do both. So they have webbed feet with a little claw at the tip of each little toe. And then of course you have land turtles. So box turtles and tortoises. Those guys are only on land. They cannot swim. So they have actual feet. So if you're ever not sure of what you have, look at their feet. Their feet will tell you. So like if they don't have flippers, don't try to put them in water. Would not end well. <laughs> All right. Um, awesome, Teresa. I want to pass along two questions from Mr. Hancock's class. So Georgetown, Ontario, grade fours, and they're studying adaptation. So they want to know, so sea turtles live in the sea, so salt water. What would happen if you put them in fresh water? They could handle kind of small bouts of fresh water. But yes, anything that lives in the ocean that lives in salt water is going to have some method of dealing with that salt. Kind of same reason why you can't put freshwater turtles in salt water. Sea turtles actually have what we call salt glands. There's two big glands right behind their eyes and their head that when every time they kind of take a piece of food or drink some of that water, those salt glands will pull the salts out from the water so that way they're effectively drinking fresh water. And then they'll excrete the excess salt out through their tear ducts. So whenever they're on land, which is typically when they're nesting, it looks like that mama turtle is crying. And of course, folklore says that she's crying because she's never going to see those babies again. They're not true tears. It's the salt's being excreted from behind her eyes. They do it all the time, just that when they're in the water, you can't see it. Just like some animals, they'll have really salty pee or they'll just expel it with sea turtles. They cry. Very neat. All right. Uh, and then the second question from that class, we've seen these turtles sleeping in the bottom before. So how long can they hold their breath? Well, when they're sleeping, they can hold their breath up to about five hours. That's crazy. All right. So don't try that at home either. Just like you shouldn't have a sea turtle as a pet, don't try and breathe underwater for five hours. Not a good idea. Very neat. All right. Um, let's dive back in with a long round of questions, guys. So back to Miss Smith's class. If you guys want to kick us off, go for it. If we see a turtle on the road, how would we um, safely get it across the road? <laughs> so with turtles on the road, you always want to make sure that you put them in the same direction that they're going turtles of all kinds, not just sea turtles, they're very stubborn. So if you put them back where they came from, they're just going to turn right back around and try to cross the road again. So you always have to make sure you're putting them in the same direction. And if you're not sure of what type of turtle, it's kind of best not to pick them up because you'll get the snapping turtles that can bite you. They are wild animals. Now a box turtle, they're not really going to bite you, but if you're unsure, try to use a stick or something and just kind of gently kind of push them across the road. Um, I know of somebody who also uses like a snow shovel that he always has in the back of his truck. But of course, it always depends on the type of turtle, the size of the turtle. But just always be safe. And just like with any wild animal, don't go sticking your fingers right in front of its mouth because even the sea turtles, if you do that, even they'll bite you. Yep. Good rule for a thumb for every animal. Uh, all right, uh, Ms. Wyatt's class, if you guys want to come up, go for it for a second question. What's the shortest time a turtle has been in the, um, yeah. In the hospital? Yeah. Yeah, in the hospital. Cool. <laughs> well, it depends on what's wrong with them. Like we've had turtles come in because they've been hooked by a fisherman. Because especially the loggerheads, 
they'll go after the bait, especially if you're using fish or squid, something tasty like that. So they'll go get a hook stuck in their mouth, but otherwise completely healthy because that turtle was healthy before it decided to go after the fish hook. And so those turtles will come in, we'll get the fish hook out. And as long as it hasn't caused any damage, we can get them out kind of the same day or the next day. So that those are typically our quickest turnarounds. But luckily we don't get too many of those. Yeah. All right. Uh, question from a bunch of groups on YouTube, Ms. Lumley's class, Mr. Hancock's class, are their shells hard or soft? What's going on? <laughs> their shells are hard. That shell is bone. And so it grows as they grow. So just like with people, but that also means that when they get damaged, it will heal, but it will never fully regenerate. So they'll always have a scar. So smalls, we just decided to pop up again. Probably not going to be able to see it in the video, but we do have pictures up on our website of smalls. Smalls was hit by a boat. And so she's got scars all over her back and all down near her butt. And so it's fine. She doesn't hurt in any way but she'll just always look a little bit different. She'll always have a few scars, but scars are a part of growing up. They sure are. All right. Um, Miss Doty's class, if you guys have a second question, go for it. Do you make the turtles breed in the hospital or not? Question. Breeding in captivity doesn't typically work out very well. Sea turtles will always return to the same beach that they were hatched from to lay their own eggs. They have built-in GPS, very similar to birds. And so, again, sea turtles, very stubborn. So if they know that it's not their beach, they won't lay. So even if we were to give them the most perfect, pristine beach here, they know it's not their beach, so they won't lay. They'd either hold the eggs inside which would make them sick, or they would drop the eggs in the water, which would kill the embryo. Mm -hmm. So breeding captivity is not an option. That's why we always try to focus on releasing as many as we can. And why with a lot of these non-releasable turtles, these are the ones that will end up at zoos or aquariums. So that way a zoo or an aquarium isn't taking a mating turtle out of that wild population. Fantastic, all right. Um, a question we always get every time. I, I love it. Uh, Miss Olson's class, if you guys want to come up for another one. Go right ahead. Um, have you guys ever had any straw-related injuries? And you said, oh, straw-related injuries, yeah. <laughs> Not like the one in the video where they had to pull the straw out of the sea turtle's nose. Luckily, luckily that doesn't happen very often. Uh, but a lot of the times, what we end up seeing here is that they've ingested plastics, but it's in such small little pieces that we can't always tell what it came from. Yeah. So we get a lot of like, especially like those microplastics, like, you know, it's plastic, but we just don't know what it came from. Um, you, you've highlighted uh, releasing turtles a lot, getting them to other places. And I want to ask what makes you know that a turtle is releasable? This is a question from a group on YouTube. They want to know, how can you tell that it's time to release it? A lot of different factors. Um, you can go based off of just their behavior and how they're eating, because if they're still very lethargic and they're not eating very well, that's a clear sign we cannot release them. Uh, but depending on the type of turtle and the type of reason why they came in, we can sometimes do a test. So with the green sea turtles, we're not typically always as picky because the green sea turtles, they eat plants. Their food does not move. So they don't have to be nearly as fast or as agile. And so like Montel there, if he was missing one of his rear flippers instead of a front flipper, he may have been a candidate for a release, but because the ones he's missing are both on his front end, he's definitely not. But like for Trinity, which will make our way back up there. <laughs> uh, as long as they have the three and we can put them in a larger tank and just kind of watch them because you can watch them to see if they are able to dive, if they're able to stay on the bottom and sleep on the bottom and just overall general swimming ability. 
It's like if you throw, if you have a child in a swimming pool, you can typically tell within a few minutes if they're a good swimmer or not. Kind of same thing with these turtles. But we do, especially for the loggerheads, because we do have starfish who we're not sure yet. So starfish is a loggerhead. It's about 100 pounds. But just like with Trinity was attacked by a shark. But with starfish, he ended up with wounds on all four flippers. It wasn't just the one kind of swipe that Trinity has. So he's missing half of his left front flipper and just about all of his right rear flipper. Now, typically missing more than one definite candidate for non-release. But because his are on opposite sides and opposite ends, he might. We'll know for sure once he heals up and his infection is all gone, because at that point we'll be able to put him in one of our larger tanks and give him some live food. Because if he can, can't catch a crab in a tank, that means he can't catch a crab in the ocean. But he's not there yet. He still needs a few more months to heal. And then we'll give him his test. Well, hopefully you can pass it. That's awesome. Um, all right, Teresa, we're going to take two more questions from groups and then we'll wrap up after that. So Miss Whitcomb's class, if you guys want to come up first and then I'll go to Miss Brunke's class in a second. Hello, my name is Blake. And my question is, how old is Jack-o'-lantern and Bowie? <laughs> well, Bowie is close to about 40 years old. Jack-o'-lantern... Uh, he's still considered that sub-adult, so he's still kind of like a teenager. So Jack-o'-lantern here is probably only about 15 to 20 years old. All right. <laughs> I like the concern for Jack-o'-lantern. I love the name. All right. Uh, let's go to Miss Brunke's class to wrap us up. Thanks so much. This guys has been great. Great question so far. If you guys want to come up, go for it. Can people visit your hospital? Yeah. Yes, we are open to the public. So you do have to come down to the Florida Keys. It's not a traveling exhibit. We don't take these turtles around. But yes, if you ever find yourself in the Florida Keys or here in Marathon, um, we are open to the public. You can come see all of these guys and more because the turtles are always changing. Yeah. Plus, it's oh. nice and warm down here and there's no snow. Lucky you guys. There, there is in, in all our places that we're joining in from today. Except California, they're lucky too. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's a great segue into the last question that I want to ask. And that is, so if kids can't actually make it to the hospital, how can they find out more about what you guys are doing? How can they donate? How can they help conserve turtles uh, with you guys? What can they go look at? Well, we do have our website. So turtlehospital.org. Yeah. Um, we're always trying to keep our patients and our turtles updated on there. Uh, we do regular Facebook live videos. Uh, especially if you're interested in more of like the day-to-day -day caring of a lot of these turtles. We'll do patient updates on that as well. Mm -hmm. And then for some of our non-releasable turtles, like Montel and Bender and Bubble Butt, those guys will actually do adoptions. So doesn't mean you get to take the turtle home, but it's kind of a sponsorship. So you get to kind of help care for, pay for the care and the feeding of these turtles because they do tend to eat a lot about 1% to 3% of their body weight a day. Plus the turtles get to write you letters all throughout the year. That's amazing. I don't know how you get them to do that, but that is very cool. All right. <laughs> Teresa, this has been fantastic. I'll share the Facebook, Twitter page, and your website with all our classes. And as you know what we do at the end of every session, uh, I'm going to demute everyone's microphones. And so boys and girls, if you guys could get ready to join me in saying a huge thank you to Teresa and the Turtle Hospital, you are all demuted. Go for it. Bye. Thank you. Awesome, guys. <laughs> I love you. Thanks so much, Teresa. This is fantastic as always. So nice to have you in. All right. Have a lovely rest of your day, guys. We'll see you soon. And hopefully you guys get a chance to help the Turtle Hospital do the great work that they're doing. For now, have a lovely rest of your day.